Ciao and benvenuto to Football Family Feuds. How's that? Okay. Good? You wanna give it a go? No. No? Uh, uh, benvenuto. Welcome to another edition of... Wait. Ben Ciao. Benvenuto. Football Family Feuds. So, all our Italian subscribers, hopefully we did a good job of that. So, as you can see, it's the Italian Chelsea 11. I was going to do a Scandinavian one, but I'll leave that for another time. And apologies, we've, got, we've probably got two videos going out at the same time, because the one I did yesterday for the Dutch one, it was meant to be published. It was meant to be published yesterday, but I had some difficulties in um, getting it out to you guys. So that's hence I had to um, get it out first thing in the morning. So today, Italy. So we've been great. We've got uh, since, um, what's it, Viale? Zo Viale, yeah, Viale. Since Viale came to Chelsea, we have been graced with many, many fantastic Italian players. Wouldn't you agree? Okay. So before we get into the video, guys, you know what to do. Tell them. Like this video, subscribe to the YouTube channel, and turn on all notifications so you won't miss whenever we post a video. Okay, pop quiz Zane. Because someone who said, um, first of all, someone said that I'm trying to force you to watch football. Am I forcing you to watch football? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, bye then. <laughs> uh, he's only joking. I don't force him to watch football. Uh, he watches mainly Chelsea games, and that's why he doesn't know where the, that Chelsea plays for Leicester. So. <laughs> or was that a joke? It was a joke, guys. He did know that Chilwell plays for Leicester. He's just having a bit of banter on the channel, okay? Right. I'll see how much you really do know about football. So, how many Italian players can you name who have played for Chelsea? Eleven. No, name them then. You just talk. No, name the ones. Before I go through the list, name all the Italian players that you can think about who've played for Chelsea. Think of first, so. Viali? Yeah, Viali. Jorginho, uh-huh. No. <laughs> yeah, uh, uh, um. Who's the player I always go on about from my, when I was younger? The genius. The genius. Zola. <sighs> yes. Um, um, you've missed two who are currently playing at the moment. One a left back. Um, Emerson Pomberry. Yeah. And one we had, it was a right back. A couple of... And I said that oh, the um, pizza um, man. Remember I said the pizza man looked like him when I, we were to see Chelsea versus Bournemouth? Oh yeah, um, I was after Costa. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. And I probably, you probably won't remember it. Oh yeah, and... Um, no? Who? Right, so yeah, not yeah, bad. Yeah, I know. I'm, I'm not bad. Like, yeah, yeah, start, yeah, looking man. Uh, right, so I'll give you a bit of a history lesson because some of these guys you don't know. Okay, so let's start off with the goalkeeper. In goal, we've got Carlo Cudicini. Carlo Cudicini was um, a good goalkeeper for us, but um, he was also an unlucky goalkeeper for us. Uh, he came in 92, uh, the year 2000 um, under Ranieri, and during that spell, that four-year spell under Ranieri, we didn't really will, win anything because I mentioned it in the video yesterday, we were, do, we were going through a rebuilding stage, and um, so we weren't really uh, competing for the top honours. But then, when um, Jose Mourinho came in, we had bought a goalkeeper called Peter Cech. Obviously, you know, everyone knows about Peter Cech. Um, and uh, Peter Cech from the Czech Republic. Uh, and uh, he, uh, because of what, uh, Peter Cech's reputation, he sort of, he's pushed called Kudicini out of the team. And uh, Kudicini only played three matches when we won the league, so he wasn't eligible to get a, a um, pick up a league type trophy. But you have to do like four. Yeah, you have to play at the time. There's a rule there to play at least five, is it ten? Something like ten. Like make an appearance or, or like Yeah, three. or make an appearance. And then the season after that, he only made five appearances. So again, he was unlucky and he missed out. I think they've changed the rules now so that they've um, they can give it to anyone within the squad. They don't have to play a certain amount of rules, a certain amount of games. But back then, 
it was you had to play a certain amount of games so he was unlucky to miss out on two occasions although he did feature for us in those um, champion title winning seasons um, but then he joined Tottenham because he was such a nice when usually when a player goes from Chelsea to Tottenham he's like a hate figure but because um, Kudicin was such a nice person he didn't rock the boat even when he was dropped down to substitute he was always professional about it um, the, none of the Chelsea fans were upset with him when he when he joined Tottenham um, and the Tottenham weren't rivals back then anyway so it didn't really matter um, are they rivals now? probably not <laughs> anyway um, Zappa Costa what do you know about Zappa Costa Zane? tell us about Zappa Costa mm -hmm. what do you think of him when he was at Chelsea? He had a good reputation at first because he scored that goal. Oh yeah, it was a brilliant goal, wasn't it? Yeah, he ran from far, didn't he? Is it in the U? It's a, it's a Champions League game, wasn't it? The like quarterback. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Like I was like, oh, this guy's gonna be good. No, it was Champions League. We were in Champions League then. It was Europa League. No, it was Champions League. Corey and Bag were in the Champions League. Wait, is it when we went to Barcelona? Remember, Conte had won us the league that season. So, yeah, it was Champions League because Conte had won us the league the season before. Yeah, so what else do you remember about him? Uh, yeah, he was pretty fast down that side, but he wasn't great defensively, was he? He sounded like Diego Costa. Hmm? <laughs> Yeah, yeah, it did sound like Diego Costa as well. Zappa Costa, Diego Costa. But yeah, he used to bomb down that wing, but his crossing, he used to cross the ball a lot, but it didn't really used to go anywhere, did it? So, And his defending was a bit, although his positioning was poor. And yeah, so he didn't quite make it at Chelsea. Another panic buy, because he wasn't one of uh, Conte's original choices, but then he came, he came in and um, it didn't do that great and obviously got loaned out he's on loan at the moment okay um at left back we've got emerson palmieri talk to him about palmieri what do you think about him yeah, yeah like, start of the season good but then he got injury mm. so then after the injury he wasn't like as good as he was yeah good summary that's what i'd have said yeah um he came in, he had a bad injury before we signed him, actually, a bad Achilles injury. Not Achilles, he had a, his cruciate knee operation. He came back last, uh, under Sari, he wasn't in the side and he eventually got into the side and did well. But um, this season, as you said, quite rightly said, started the season really well, had an injury. That injury, I think, knocked his confidence and he hasn't been able to win his um place back into the side but I still think if he gains that confidence back there's a good left back waiting to come out there um so uh, moving on to centre backs now let me talk about these two because you haven't even heard of them the first one is a guy called Panucci um Panucci came in under Viale uh, really good reputation he was an Italian international he was he's a right back but I'm going to be putting him in a centre back because we haven't really had a lot of Italian centre backs, and he was six foot two, I believe. So he's got that presence to play as a centre back as well. I think he had, he did play some games at centre back as well, but mainly primarily play, played as a right back. Um, he's quite moody. Some some Italians are. He was quite um, uh, sulky, but he did he didn't play that many times. Well, but he was he put in some good performances when he was for us. But I wouldn't say that he was at his best when he came to Chelsea. And the second centre half I'm um, having in is a guy called Luca Picassi. Um, Picassi, not many of you know about. He came in a deal which included Dalabona. Dalabona was the main player that we we're after, and um, Picassi came probably just to keep him company because they were mates at Atalanta. They were from the Atalanta uh, youth team. They both came in as 17 year olds. Whereas Dalabona made it, I'll talk about Dalabona a bit later. Um, Picasso didn't really make it at Chelsea. He only featured in two games and both of them were substitute appearances. One was in the League Cup and one was in the FA Cup. Then he sort of disappeared really because he went, I can't remember where he went after that. He didn't, his career didn't really take off and I think he finished playing quite early. He finished about 24, 25, so he didn't really have a, a great career in, 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 in football. Uh, so that's our defence sorted and now we move on to midfield. Jorginho, talk. Yeah, he's a good passer. Mm-hmm. Yeah, 
basic Fabregas. He reminds me like Fabregas. Uh huh. It made the most bad things on his Yeah. Talk to me about a pass you remember. Wait. Remember that pass? Again, in what game was it? Was it Watford? Tammy Abraham? Oh, when it really liked yeah. the When that first time pass, when he, that fantastic pass to Tammy Abraham, when he sort of curled it around to him. That was probably the pass of the season, wasn't it? It was Wolves. Was it Wolves? No, I think it was Watford. They won that 5 No, 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 not that one. The one where he curled it around the defender and Tammy Abraham came and knocked it in. Um, yeah, so that was the, definitely the pass of the season for me. Um, Jorginho is the orchestra. He was brought in to play Sari Ball. Sari played because um, he and so when Sari left, a lot of people thought that he'll go with Sari. Um, at first, a lot of Chelsea fans didn't take to him, not because of him as a player, but because he was a lot of Chelsea fans who didn't like Sari. Um, they saw him as um, Sari's sort of manager on the pitch sort of thing is orchestrate on the pitch so that's because they gave him an unfair uh, reception but he won the fans over um, some fans are still not sure about him because they say that defensively he's, he's not as good but he's not bad defensively but the only thing that he lacks is a bit of pace and physicality but that's something you can't really help you know, you've either got pace or you haven't but um, yeah it's a great passer um, He's a good leader as well on the pitch, so um, I, for one, am happy that he's in the team. Uh, and the other midfielders we have is uh, Di Matteo. What do you remember Di Matteo for? Oh, yeah, he was our Champions League winning manager. But I remember Di Matteo. Oh, yes, I saw. I showed you that goal in the FA Cup, didn't I? The goal where he scored against Middlesbrough. Yeah. I did. Where he, he in the first minute? Goal. I showed you that goal before. First minute of the game against Middlesbrough. Remember when we were doing that video, why we support Chelsea? Yeah. And then from that video, why I support Chelsea, I showed you the goal oh. where he ran after them for the pitch and and shot it from distance. Oh yeah. Yeah. So that. So I'll always remember him for that. That was the first time I've ever witnessed Chelsea win a trophy. I was at Wembley that day. Great moment. And also remember him for his celebration. We played Middlesbrough. That's another game I attended at Stamford Bridge once. And uh, we beat them 1-0, I think. When it, he scored late. It was a very good goal. But he did this really cool celebration where he just went down to the ground and went like this on his knee. Like that. And all the other players followed him. It was so cool. Yeah. That was one of the coolest celebrations in football. I was think I'd dig up a picture and put it on there. Yeah, so yeah, and uh, again he would have had a better career for us. His career was cruelly ended by injury as well. He had a bad injury, otherwise he could have gone on to greater things at Chelsea. But he still achieved a lot while he was with us. And he brought sexy football, Italian football to our midfield back then. And then Dalabone, I, I mentioned him earlier. He was the guy who was brought in with that Picasso, Picasso guy. And um, Dalabona had more joy for us. He played 43 times, I think, so about five goals for us. And that's in our rebuild again under the Ranieri um, era. And um, he was ne he wasn't never going to be like an outstanding world class player, but he was a decent guy who could do a job for us. And he. he took us through a bit of a transition until we brought somebody in. I think he was replaced by someone like Petit or something like that in the end. But um, yeah, um, okay for us. But yeah, he's the only other midfielder, I think, Italian midfielder I can think of. That's why he gets into the team. Right, up front now, that's where we start to get sexy. Gianfranco Zola. You hear me talking about him a lot, don't you, Jane? Mm -hmm. Zola was my favourite player at the time and he's probably in my top three for all-time favorite players um, I mentioned yesterday in my Dutch video or even today because we posted today uh, when Hulik came along I was thinking and then uh, when Hulik became manager he tried to raise the profile even further and he said this is Zola because Zola um, 
he was playing for um, was it Palmer, I think. It was a, out of favour at the time for them. But this guy was a baller. He was doing some amazing, amazing things. And when he came into Chelsea, he announced himself as a free kick king where he scored a goal on his debut free kick. And every time we had a free kick, we thought, goal, goaler, Zola. Zola the goaler. <laughs> <laughs> and he was, oh man, for some, some of the skills that he pulled up, some of the... I remember once he sent um, Julian Dix, he was a West Ham left back, he sent him to hospital because he was just twisting him one way, the other way. And I think we're still untimed and knots now. Jamie Carragher, <laughs> he's another one who, I'm surprised he's on Sky TV actually. I thought he'll still be trying to untangle himself because Zola, <laughs> he went twisting him one way, another way, one way. And what's his name? Yeah. Carragher was going like this. Yeah, it was crazy. Crazy, yeah. That's the day, that's when we had to beat Liverpool actually to win the game in the Champions League. We were 2 0 up, game was nearly over, and Zola just started toying with the Liverpool defence. Brilliant moment. Um, he's had also some great moments with Zola. I remember another brilliant moment on the Zola with Zola. We were in the um, Europa, um, no, it's called the, the Cup Winners' Cup at the time. Uh, for some reason, um, Viali was the manager, he had him a substitute. And it was nil-nil at the time. He brought him on, um, and about five minutes after he brought him on, Dennis Wise passed it to him. Bang, goal! And that was the only goal, and we won the um, Cup Winners' Cup because of that. So yeah, Zola, main man in this Italian team, brilliant guy. Um, Viali himself, he gets in. Viali is another one who came towards the end of his career. Again, it was a massive coup because what Chelsea used to do, they used to bring in these players on a free transfer, these superstars like Hulli, or, or like um, Zola was 29 when he came, but he still played many times. But Viali came in at 31 or 32 after just winning the Champions League for Juventus. And um, the guy's movement, so as a striker, if you want to be a centre forward, watch that guy's movement. Movement was second to none. Brilliant. And I like the type of way he used to hit the ball early as well. So, you know, the ball comes in, just hit it first time. He scored four goals away from home against Barnsley in one of the games. I remember um, my greatest memory of Viardi. We were playing in the FA Cup against Liverpool, 2 0 down. Liverpool were good then. They were, we used to win the league season in season out. We were an up and coming team. Um, so Liverpool were 2 0 up, cruising at Stamford Bridge. And um, Viali was on the bench. I think he had Mark Hughes and Zola were the strikers then. He brought Viali off the bench. He went three up. And that was Rude Hullet, I think. No, Rude Hullet was the um, the manager. And he brought Viali on. And Viali scored two goals for us. We came back, beat Liverpool 4 2. Viali scored two goals. Brilliant. But. It was a bittersweet day for me. That the, the game was fantastic, but the reason why it was a bitter day for me, Zane, I was meant to go to that match, queued up to get my ticket for that game, um, and so we had to queue up for about an hour. I, I went first thing in the morning, got to the front of the queue. Guess what? I forgot my membership card. So you have to show your membership card to show you're a member to get a ticket. I forgot my membership card, so I couldn't go to the game. Can't believe it. Did you pay for it? No, no, I couldn't go. I had to show that in order to purchase the ticket, I needed my membership card. Didn't have it. So yeah, so um, I had to watch it on TV. Uh, yeah, but um, was that the way the game was? You needed to be in the ground to really enjoy it. But you know, still managed to enjoy the game. Um, and. Finally, up front, we got Kasaragi. He was a striker brought in um, by Viali. And we were really unlucky with Kasaragi. Kasaragi had a brilliant reputation in Italian, Italian international. He was brought in to score our goals. So, and um, because we were lacking a, a goal scorer at the time, um, Viali had just retired. And he came in and him and Zola striked up a good partnership. Then he had a bad injury, a really bad knee injury. And that season, I'm always adamant that had he not been injured, we would have won the league because that's the season. Remember I talked about Steve Guppy in one of the games where, against Leicester where we missed out on the league. Had Casiraghi been fully fit, 
um, that season, I think that he would have scored the goals to make us win the league that season. So, that's it. That's my Italian team. I think that's a quite a decent team. Um, Centre-back, probably an issue. Zappa Costi at right back, don't know. But um, that's quite a good team. Midfield are strong. Attacking is strong. Goalkeeping is strong. So let me know, guys, what you think of this team. Who you put in instead? Is there anyone who I've missed out? Let me know. And um, so, um, Italians, what do you think? You know, we've got a strong Italian um, Chelsea contingent because of what happened with VR and all those others. So lots of supporters now um, support Chelsea. So um, next time we'll do what, um, probably a Spanish one. And we've got the Scandinavian one to do. And we've got South America as well. So don't forget, guys, to... Like, subscribe, and turn on all notifications to be notified when we make a video. Okay, take care, guys. Bye.